Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another commentary done by Dignity. This is BSL 17 Hasu League Finals. We've got Urban going up against Range. Urban one game away from the championship. Ranged fighting for his life. Upper right hand corner, we got Urban starting as the purple Zerg. Bottom right hand corner, we got Range starting as the green Protoss. I don't think game seven could be polypoid if it goes to a game seven, but it would be great if it was. This is on retro. It would be very poetic. Got another replay folder, so it's possible. Thus far, it's been Battle of Macro mid-game, and it seems like when Ranged has not responded to Urbmon's mid-game macro aggression, he's had trouble. And when it's gone to late game, Urbmon's had a little bit of trouble closing things out. It's been an epic final either direction. Overlord going top left initially here for Urban. We got a pylon and it looks like we're going to see a gateway opener for ranged. This is a four player map, which does open up the possibility of a 12 hatchery. One problem for 12 hatcheries on, or for gateway openers on 12 player maps is sometimes it is a little bit harder to get eyes in time. It looks like it's going to be an overpool though for Urban instead. See if he hopefully doesn't forget an Overlord in the early stages of the game this time. Overlord check the 6 o'clock location. That actually saves range, uh, range quite a bit. Gonna check top left and then move across to the right. I'm trying to think if there's anything in particular that's really, really played well for ranged as far as strategies. Uh, honestly, up to this stage, Urban's done a fantastic job of defending against drops, but Range's drops against Urban have been fantastic, so maybe if he relies on that play might find some success here. Drone going to get first scout bottom right. Find that Zealot. Second probe moving out, interestingly enough, so Range serious about early stage aggression. Do we have... So we have initial Zerglings being constructed. First Zealot on its way. Drone going to return to home base. And that probe, that's, I'm wondering if this was a misrallied probe. It must have been a misrallied probe because it started moving out. Maybe it was trying to play mind games. Three Zerglings bring out in the field. The Zealot going to scramble back to the bottom right. Urban just sending the Zerglings. Hatchery up without any sort of delay. Gas around 248. But that is going to be gas before third hatchery. Looks like Urban waiting to see. If you can get that up. And range going to do what I have enjoyed seeing, where it's go ahead and drop the Nexus, but just blockade the ramp with the, the probes and the Zealots. Urban taking the free damage that he can get. He needs, and this actually, range needs to be careful moving those Zealots out like that. Because one misstep, you can get swarmed and end up losing a Zealot. Instead, they're now staging out to the front, probe and Zealot holding. So that Nexus should be secured. Third hatchery at the 12 o'clock. And the probe getting an eyeful. Able to see the gas timing and what's what else not. The Zerling's looking to maybe try to shoot that gap. But also revealing that there's no Zergling speed at this stage. Assimilator about halfway finished. Forge in the main. Wonder if we're going to see a cybernetic score at the natural expansion. To complete the, the blockade. Probe is going to wander up and see that. Layer timing. And if we haven't seen three hatch, the standard three hatch mutilus play from Urban up to this stage, kind of the bread and butter meta. I'm wondering if we're going to finally see it here in this game six. Cybernetics who are now warping at that natural expansion. It's also possible that this could transition into a. There's just a lot of possibilities. We could see the three hatch. Lurker Contain play. This is a pretty good map for containment because you have this bridge you can fall back to in case of skirmishes. Second gas dropped. Overlord making its way into the main to scout things out. So it looks like it is going to be a tech push for range, most likely to High Templar. Probe's still alive in between all of this. Is it finally going to get wiped out? Is able to spot at least some more Zerglings that are out on the field. Second Overlord making its way forward for Urban. Try to scout those Zealots out. Plus one weapons and Stargate. 
in between. Preventative photon cannon just in case, because range not able to confirm that it wasn't in fact 973. And it looks like it is going to be a spire opener. I presume fourth hatchery standard. Zergling speed finally finished. Overlord's going to retreat. The Zealot's holding for right this second. The Overlord going to make its way out upon confirming the Citadel of Vadoon and that Stargate. <clears throat> I'm almost curious if we're going to see old school Bisu builds play. A little bit of a exchange before that cannon comes online. The gateway has taken some damage. With all that gateway damage, I could see range being a little bit more concerned about a Hydralis bust in the mid game. But right now, Urban sitting at that 27 worker count off the three hatcheries. Has dropped that fourth hatch on the front, so it looks like it's going to be the standard initial scourge into defensive four hatch macro zerg play. Going back to the old school meta. The thing that works. Zealot's currently holding a line. Plus one weapons is being upgraded on the front. Are we seeing double Stargate? No, just, just plus one weapons. Photon Cannon in the main and at the natural. And expectation, honestly, of a larger Mutalisk Flood, potentially. Corsair making its way out. One thing I do like about the four hatch with the two Overlords out in the field is with those Scourge wandering, the Corsair are less likely to get the bonus Overlord kills. These two Scourge not able to plant. Lair's been spotted. The Zealot's starting to march out now against the Zerglings to try to get there before that SimCity's completed. Creep Colony is mutating to Colony. Creep Colony in the lines. It's going to blockade a patch, but well worth it potentially in the defense. And the Zergling is going to huddle up and wait to engage where they can. The Corsair being folded back. Fortunately for both players, it's kind of a situation where they're in the dark. The Corsair likes spotting where the Zerglings are in position to maybe open up something for the, the Zealots. And the, the Scourge likes spotting those Zealots oftentimes to see where they're headed. But Erdmon going to be a little bit delayed. So all of most of his Zerglings here out of position. Range looks like he's not going to force his way into this, recognizing that he just wants to try to preserve this. Instead, he's going to fall back and engage the Zerglings. Hydro is being built at both locations. We have Hydro Speed almost finished, plus one weapons on the Hydro being built. So it's the fold back into the five hatch Hydro Lisk. Plus one weapons about halfway done, but it looks like it's just going to be a single. This almost feels like a waste because it's a single Stargate, no additional Corsair. So I feel like that's a bit of a misstep and a little bit of unutilized gas for range, but he is already staging up to grab that six o'clock. Couple zealots planted, making sure that Urmon's playing defensively, keeping him honest. And I like this play actually. Go ahead and grab that six a little bit early. Kind of cutting, also kind of leaving Urmon a little bit anxious where he isn't sure whether he needs to dedicate reinforcements either direction. And I love it when Protoss do that, because I think it really makes Zerg nervous. It's like, okay, do I have a dive at one location or the other? Ventral Sacks, pretty early uh, drop upgrade once again. Zelsia just trying to get Zergling kills as the Zerglings are moving out of position. The Zerglings funneling around, that would disrupt the 6 o'clock should it have been grabbed. The Scourge going to go ahead and scout things forward. We don't have Mutalisks in play to pick off the High Templar. But I'm wondering if the High Templar were a little bit out of position, if that would have been a... I watched. Plus one weapons was cancelled last second. It looks like. And the Zergling's gonna find that probe at the 6 o'clock. Be able to clear that out. Gateway Flood. Bring the, the count up to 7. Double Forge in the main. Citadel of Vadoon there. Templar Archives as well, but it was High Templar that were produced rather than Dark Templar. At the natural. Sometimes I like it when there's a Overlord that's not out in the field, just to like... Get a Dark Templar out there to make sure that front remains clear. The Zealot's going to engage the Zerglings midfield. Get the bonus. Get the bonus kills if you can. Urban at a pretty solid worker count. As he's tacking on his six hatchery. And I'm wondering if he's going to go for some of that mid-game aggressive drop play with some lurkers in between. Or if he is going to go for additional base, it looks like range going to go ahead and che uh, check that top left. He's currently camped at the 3 o'clock as well. Zergling's blockading opposite direction. 
Overlord fanning out from Urban to try to get vision on where these zealots are. I think Urban wanting to hunt them down now that plus one weapons is in place. And let's see if he folds down for a contain as well. We do have that probe. It looks like making its way out to the three o'clock. We've got dragoons in range just about to finish. Robotics facility is there. The observatory as well. I don't know if we have an observer out in the field. But both players playing a little bit defensively. We have an Overlord making its way. He should be able to spot that Zealot at the top left. So Pylon dropping out of Overlord range. And range also clearing out the Zergling 6 o'clock to kind of... This is kind of a brave take, honestly. Expanding into your opponent like this. And with drop in between, it could be, could be trouble. Ranged pocketing troops to make sure... That he's staying a base ahead in the meantime. A drone actually moving up here at the 3 o'clock. So it's going to find that pylon. So instead, Urban expanding into ranged. Gone pylon, Nexus grab at the 6 o'clock. Let's see if range contests. It's got a lot of dragoons, plus two weapons. And no lurkers here on the high ground yet. Nor, do, nor any lurkers morphing currently at any location. Some additional sunkens. It looks like some lurkers on that ramp. Yeah, Urban playing very defensively. Moving up another drone, so it looks like he wants... I presume he wants to get up to the high ground here. Drop another hatchery there. If he can get a hydro skin position, it's one of those things where he might be able to swarm from behind. Urban dangerously close in supply, is pretty healthy as far as the worker count goes. And look at this. We got a drop in the main. The lurkers are going to die pretty rapidly, but wow, they're doing damage. So the cannon's able to clean them up, but... Range taking a pummeling. And that's forcing a counterattack that he... Off. The Observer got picked off there as well, which means the Lurkers are in fact going to hold. And that was disaster for Range. So not only did he lose... And never mind, the Lurkers are also going to drop at the 6 o'clock on top of everything else to deny additional mining. So now Urban up Workers. He can go ahead and grab top left. All he has to do is make sure he doesn't fold to anything here mid-map from ranged. Holding momentarily. Some Hydralisks actually moving out to maybe go for a flank. Yeah, ranged trying to find a place to poke. Recognizing he's got to do something to get back in this match. Storming the Hydralisks. Causing a fan out, and is Urban going to fl uh, range trying to pull back and get a flank, but actually Urban folding and regrouping. High Tump are exposed. Not the ones that have Storm, fortunately, and the Lurker is able to plant right on top of that line. The Observer is protected, and some beautiful side storm at all corners actually able to clean up just desiccated corpses of Hydralisks remaining. So a great engagement, honestly, from range, but he's still playing from behind. Going to be able to walk a couple of those Dragoons home regardless. Urban taking top left. He actually halted the 3 o'clock. So range not in as bad a position as it might seem. He's still down. But he's not critically down. That Lurker actually still at the 6 o'clock. Has been working on that Nexus this entire time. Finally an Observer. Going to be able to walk up. And clean it up. Hydro's going to retreat. And some Dragoon's going to walk in here to the 3 o'clock. Are they going to force another hatchery cancel? It looks like I believe these Hydralists are going to be able to get there in time to defend. The Overlord just barely sneaks out. But Urban up in workers, up in supply. Range needs to find a way to sneak back into this. He does have a little bit of breathing room because Urban hasn't managed to get that 3 o'clock or top left saturated yet. But honestly, as soon as Urban gets this saturated and up and running, particularly if he caps one of these additional gases... With the superior worker count, he's going to be in very, very favorable conditions. That Overlord got it? No, just kind of detecting over that edge. And right now, ranged, after expending that army in between, doesn't have a lot to work with as far as being able to... So he's going to have to get it done either through sneaky drops or something along those lines. So if Urban just plants a couple Scourge to the southern border, keeps eyes midfield, and keeps some Scourge top left... He should be okay. He's also got this Overlord here at the 6 o'clock to see if a uh, shuttle's making its way across mid-map. Ranged going to try to... S so this method of trying to get back into it, try to sneak some expansions bottom left. Just hope that Urban doesn't spot it. Two more Overlords scooped up. A couple Lurkers. 
So Urban not going to falter as far as the pressure goes. Has not made his way, or sorry, he's just now started making his way towards Hive. That Overlord with the Lurker going to get picked off mid-map. But that's also going to cause range to reposition. Zealot has spotted top left. The rest of that army going to try to engage, but this is without Psystorm support. This is going to be very difficult to breach, and that gives Urban a lot of time on top of that Lurker egg. This gives Urban a lot of time to reinforce and potentially get a, a counter swarm. Yeah, you really have to have those Psy Storms and Zealots storming up very, very rapidly to breach something like that. Instead, though, Urban donating. Well, maybe not. Just a single Hydralisk gets wiped out. But going to go ahead and reinforce that 3 o'clock location. Starting to lock that down. Top left is running for him. Behind four workers. Unfortunately, that Overlord and a couple lurkers have discovered bottom left. So Urban going to dedicate a lot of these Hydralisks. Ranged going to run in to try to attack from the rear. But it's I don't think it's going to be in time. The Hydralisks can pick that off and just focus fire that Nexus down. And if he picks off that probe, he just needs to keep eyes. Well worth it. See if he still gets value out of the... Yeah, they just... That was a whole lot of lost resources that range couldn't afford. The Hydral's going to move into the high ground and turn around from fight from here for an even more advantageous exchange. Nothing going right for range right now. More lurkers grouping up for drop play. I love it. And the Hydral's still actually not able... The, the Dragoon actually working against... His allies to sweep in. Nice upgrades though for range. That's at least one thing in his favor. Supplies are even. Hive tech is up. Don't see a defiler mount or anything else. We also we have a Nidus canal going up top left. That's going to make it a lot more challenging for range to wipe that base out. Right now he's heavily economically down and I missed the doom drop in the main. This time it's over the gateway line. And with these gateways unpowered and gone, and equal supply otherwise, that is going to be match. And we are going to see Urban as the BSL 17 Hasu League champion. Ranged, he just needs to defend that natural expansion. So the gateway's gone. We got this Leighton army left. More lurkers being spawned here at the main. Yeah, if Range is going to win it, he's just got to pile drive top right. Some preventative troops moving bottom left, just in case. The Lurker's moving up from the 3 o'clock location to reinforce. As soon as this army's gone, that should be it. But a huge side storm over the Lurker line at the late stages. But Range still has the problem with this. He's got to either win with this army or take a lot of territory with this army. And he's got to... And it's either or, and that's it. A lot of troops swarming in to clear what's left. That Hydralist then actually might get picked off. Some emergency Dark Temple are being built. Some nice side storms behind this. Range making a fight out of it. Also doing a great job of pr uh, protecting these observers. The Overlord's retreating. It looks like the Hydralist repositioning and attacking what's left. So Range, as far as a final last stand, he, this is a glorious last stand, I have to say. But it looks like the Archon going to get cleaned up. The last few Dragoons going to get cleaned up. The High Templar gone as well. And we still have Lurkers running around in the main. So Range would have to redrop a massive amount of gateways. He's got all sorts of resources, but nothing to build. And Urban takes it. And Urban is your BSL 17 Hasu League champ. Congratulations to him. Awesome dude as well. Be sure to check out his Twitch. Actually, check out both these guys' Twitch channel. Thank you, guys. It's been a, it was a rough season to get casting through all this. We had a whole bunch of illnesses running between. We had a delayed start. Honestly, season 18 is about to start. I'm not sure if I'm going to be casting. I might take a season off, just FYI, of season 18. I haven't decided yet. But in the meantime, thank you guys for watching this entire time. I appreciate all y'all. Thanks for listening.